In this week's episode, we discuss the astrological transits of Mercury Ingress Pisces, all about no boundaries, going into a thought process with no real intention, diving in deep to our spirituality and into our emotional sides, as well as the Sun conjunct Neptune, a renewal day. We have a challenge for you all. And with many more things to discuss in the in this episode, you can hear more of this week's transits. Please tune into this episode of Astrological Intentions. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Astrological Intentions. I am your host, Alex Reevy, along with the dragon fruit dealer herself, <laughs> Sandy Reevy. Dealing dragon fruit. Okay. <laughs> Are we talking about North Node, South Node? Yeah, uh, it is episode 189, March 7th. Let's get right into it. In the transits, we have a short week, Wednesday, March 9th, Mercury Ingress Pisces. No boundaries here. And Sunday, March 13th, Sun Conjunct Neptune. A renewal day. And that's it for the, in the transits. In talisman time, Sandy has finished up three first to stand out in the crowd, to increase wealth, success, and good fortune, and to achieve universal nature. Then upcoming, to adhere to a commitment and to nurture children. Then on the horizon, we have some events that we want to discuss with you, as well as in our house with the Ukrainian crisis on the rise. Sandy and I are going to discuss some ways to maintain some emotional well-being, as well as supporting the Ukraine. Ukrainian people. So stay tuned for this episode of Astrological Intentions. And so you finally know you control where you go. Hello, dragon fruit dealer. I get it. <laughs> I get it. I was buying some interesting fruit that I know you enjoy for your I birthday. Love, yeah, I love fruit. That is a fact about me. Um, and so we just cut it open. It was delicious. It was oh. perfectly ripe. And sometimes it's really hard to know when exotic fruits are ripe, <laughs> you know, because you just you have no, you know, when you cut into, you know, the avocado and it's not ripe. Yeah. You know, everyone knows that it's like hard as a rock. But um, yeah, sometimes dragon we, fruits. It's exotic. We didn't grow up with it. Right. So it's not an apple or an orange. Right. It's a dragon fruit, which is also called another word. It's like pitaya. Oh, pitaya. Or pitaya. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, all right. Let's get into it. I want to go direct to all you listeners. Thank you, everybody, for your messages, for your support, for listening to the podcast. I have a very special handwritten card since it was my birthday last week. Um, my grandma, also known as Mimi, uh, sent me a card and I wanted to share it because this is my one time a year to share that. So <laughs> here we go. The card says, granddaughter, every time I think of you, I feel so proud. So much about you impresses me, your attitude, your accomplishments, your personality, and there's always something new to admire. You're a wonderful young woman and I'm lucky to have you for a granddaughter. Happy birthday. Hmm. Alex, when I think of you... Those are all of the words that come to my mind. God bless, love, Mimi. Hope you have a day filled with love. Um, and she goes, also, thank you so much for all you did for my party. You are amazing. Mm. All of the the technician backgrounds where I was managing the sound for all of the performances and <laughs> the projector. Um, but it's so funny because I'm like that octopus with eight different limbs like just doing everything because I feel like I said before in the podcast I feel like I used I was like a producer or one, an octopus yeah <laughs> in a past life which one of the things this is a random thought um have you ever heard of my teacher the octopus or it's something along those lines no um, Did I read a, it to you as a child? That no, I no, 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 no. <laughs> it sounds it sounds like a children's book, but it's not. It's a documentary. Oh, um, and it's about just the intelligence of octopi mm. and just how brilliant they are. Mm. And it will probably what I've heard of it is it makes you really feel like terrible eating calamari and you know mm -hmm. things like that. So I want to. I really, really want to watch it, but at the same time, I'm a little bit hesitant but anyway so if anyone has watched it 
let me know your thoughts. Should I watch it or shouldn't I? (laughs) (laughs) Um, So let's get into the transits. We have a really, really light week. I don't know the last time we only had two transits to discuss. So we're starting off with Wednesday, March 9th, Mercury Ingress Pisces. Yeah, no boundaries. This happens around 7.30 p.m. And, you know, Mercury coming out of an air fixed sign where he is in some areas of astrology considered exalted. You have that placement. Mm -hmm. Uh, Moves into the next sign of Pisces, water mutable, which is where my Mercury sits in Pisces. (laughs) And so it's, you know, in its fall, he's in his fall, meaning fallen down a well Mm -hmm. and can't get up and in detriment. And so this is not the best or even it's not the great it's not a good placement for Mm -hmm. Mercury, but there are good things to do. When Mercury gets here for about three weeks um, every year. And so that one thing is imagine, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where there's this is more not so much linear. It's imagine. It it will be easy now for the next three weeks. Imagine the creative sacred space. Imagine that you are fluid as an octopus. Mm -hmm. And you are fluid um, and you are faith-based right it's like the trusting that you are going in the right direction even though you can't you know it's kind of like when I was right it's not like something that's either structural or tangible that you're putting your faith in it's something that's intangible that you can't see it's out of the boundaries Mm -hmm. right it it uh, you know and I don't know why I'm thinking about this right now but when I was younger and in swim class because my mom was adamant to get all of her four children I being the oldest into swim class and I had mm-hmm. this long 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 curly hair that I could sit on but it had to get up into a, um, a swim cap which was oh yeah feet trying to get hair into this no, it, that's not the only trouble with swim caps swim caps are just impossible to get on period right so with all this <laughs> hair but but what I was thinking of is at the we'd have to dive in and then swim to the opposite edge, mm-hmm. right? Well, I'm, I was the only one that could not open my eyes in I have that too, which is so funny because we're both Pisces. And swim, swim, swim. And I'm swimming and I am barely can barely catch my breath. And I think I'm like, any minute now I'm going to feel with my arm. I'm going to feel the end of the, and sure enough, I finally do. And I get to the edge and I put my arms up over it and I get, clear my eyes and I look and I'm staring at everybody because I had just gone to a literally an angled right over to where I practically just started are you serious because that literally happened to me in high school and I could never get down to the end because I could never make a straight shot neither could I and (laughs) it's because I couldn't open up my eyes underwater I couldn't open my eyes um but it just reminds me of you know it'll be good if you can just go into the trust that you're going you know swimming in the right direction and maybe you're not going anywhere you're just really supposed to be maybe going in this you know less worry swimming around having more Mm -hmm. more not a to b to c to d um aspects it's it really is a place where we can not mind the the swim lanes you know (laughs) heal and hopefully you know i know that where everyone in the world is worried Mm -hmm. uh or is incredibly their mind is overtaken with this emotional you know mercury going into a water sign is certainly um, emotional Mm -hmm. and maybe if we can speak from our heart if we could speak our feelings our true wet gooey feelings um, and maybe cry right Mm -hmm. and whether we're speaking them writing them discussing them exposing them sharing them you know, this is really great time for the the you know journaling or writing of, mm-hmm. of of something if you're or actually reading you know reading if you could get into um, a novel I know I will say that um, one of my big things this weekend is to lock back into Outlander yeah so I get to go into this um, mercurial dreamy wish although they're talking about uh the season is coming up with the revolution um of which we're in again right now 
mm-hmm. right? We're in that Pluto, um, conjunct Pluto to the United States birth chart. So we're in this power of which way do we go? Right. And so um, anyway, so here we are. I'm going off tangent, which is so like Mercury Pisces. Yes. Uh, not staying within a time frame, you know, uh, everybody, if if you've any attended any of my any things, uh, personal readings, webinars, uh, I can never stay on time. Mm-hmm. And Alex is always in the back of the room or somewhere in the room um, doing the, okay, you're done with time yep. dance. Yep. <laughs> so this is kind of what that is. It's, it's, you know, when you can treat Mercury as a sacred place of maybe healing mm-hmm. of of peaceness of of calmness yeah that it will be good to you mm-hmm. and so you know and that's actually a really you said peaceness peaceness which isn't is, that a word <laughs> i'm pretty sure it's not but it is in my language right yeah. and that's and that's such a good depiction of your natal mercury and pisces mm-hmm. because you will put words together and it makes sense but it's not a real <laughs> word you know what i mean <laughs> always. And always 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 and and that's always been something that's been you know i'm sure some people have to like really kind of like stretch their ear a little bit or like kind of like con understand like where you're conceptually coming from and i i think for some reason it totally works for you because everyone's like yeah sandy you just made up a whole new word this is awesome you know and um yeah and i seriously you do think sometimes that it is a word because it came out of my mouth i didn't what i i I, I didn't like figure out let me think about new words right it just um you're a wordsmith uh, a very unique wordsmith um out totally outside of boundaries mm-hmm. yeah so let's move on to the second transit and final transit of the week sunday march 13th sun conjunct neptune so yeah renewal day this is a sunday you know what do we used to call those when when our, the children were younger sunday fun day mm-hmm uh, can we, you know, it's not Sunday work day. It's not Sunday, Monday, um, the beginning <laughs> of a new week. It literally is a Sunday fun day. So spend this day having an enjoyable, um, peaceful, renewable mm-hmm. break for yourself. How can you go into your bathtub and retreat? Can you, can you build a, um, an hour, one, I challenge you. Okay. I challenge everybody listening mm-hmm. to on Sunday the 13th, find one hour where you create a personal retreat. That sounds and beautiful. And literally you close the door, the bathroom, your master bathroom door, lock it if you have to. We want no interruptions. Listen to your music, light the candles, put in the tub get the bubbles get the oils um really no work please zero work day Mm -hmm. um this is are you gonna follow that yes i am i'm gonna write my calendar right now okay and say the 13th is oh this is interesting can this be for both of us or just you (laughs) for both of us for all of us not at the same time everybody gets their own bathrooms right (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this is bath day. I'm going to pick bath ritual day. Perfect. But you know what I have on this calendar right now? This is probably TMI. Then maybe we don't share it? No. A friend of mine contacted me and said, what Sunday do you have in Q1 that we could um, have cocktails in the afternoon? Oh, sounds great. And literally, I went to my calendar, went to my calendar, turned a page, turned a page, turned a page, and literally got to March 13th and said, I am free Bath this bubbles. day. So I wrote down <laughs> um, going out with my friend to her house to have cocktails. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so it does. It's about bubbles. Yeah. 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 Um, but so I'm going to go, hmm, bath or drink? Mm-hmm. Anyway, interesting that I have wow, that yeah. in my calendar. 
Makes yeah, sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Makes sense. So, all right, that's the wrap of this week. It's going to be a light one. Let's move into the talisman times. The ones that you finished is Thursday, March 3rd to stand out in the crowd. It's true. Whatever I'm doing while in the peaceful meditative moments, I am noticed. My vibe radiates out to others. Uh, this Trendy is word vibe. Vibe. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is the two. This is moon being in what's called the enclosure of the two benefics. And so this is being protected or being lifted up mm-hmm. by, you know, a bounty, a cornucopia of multiples, uh, good things, and uh, connections of, re- of beauty and love. Mm-hmm. So um, again, this is with uh, the sun in Pisces, the ascendant is Pisces, and the moon is Pisces. So um, really, 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 really nice piece just to be standing in a crowd, Mm -hmm. very peaceful, yet noticed. Right. And then calming everyone there. Yep. And again, that's that magnetism that I love so much. It's just like sending out the message. You don't have to be everyone over the head about it, but just be there, be present, and be confident in that space and I think that that is just one of the most alluring and attractive parts so alluring and that's a good word Mm -hmm. so Saturday March 5th to increase wealth success and good fortune oh that's sold okay and Sunday March 6th to achieve universal nature I easily manage all energies coming toward me and releasing from me Mm -hmm. that's a good how do you manage energies that release from you right right or manage energies coming toward you anyway Mm -hmm. let me me reword this not reword it but repeat it yep um reread the words is probably what i was going (laughs) to say Uh, i easily manage all energies coming toward me and releasing from me i possess this warm steady flame of all taurian earthly gifts i am full Mm-hmm. And this is the moon at the midheaven in the third lunar mansion sitting right on Pleiades, and which also means to be full. Fullness. I love this one. And, you know, I'm just thinking of something, you know, now that we've just kind of gone over the Mercury and Pisces comments about the no boundaries and making mm-hmm. up words and things and, and being in that period of um, – allowing to whatever Mm -hmm. is coming through to come through right right? and one of the things when I just mentioned you know is like journaling right like just Mm -hmm. your creative sacred space and you know I always uh in school and I you know you know that my mom your grandmother has written all of my papers really all or all my award-winning ones (laughs) with the the fact that I was the soapbox derby queen she wrote that Speech nice. Okay. And everything. But anything that was needed to be done to include this, 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 and this, like say bullet points, mm-hmm. how, why, when, where, right? All mm-hmm. those things in school. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. But let me write about spiritual, about these talisman times, literally flows. Right. It's true. And it's that Pisces energy of when you can get into what things mean without being connected to the exact exact like getting it exactly right Mm -hmm. um you work better Mm -hmm. so uh as i'm yeah where you're right now i love when i write i I love writing a feeling you're writing an emotion you're in writing a vision Mm -hmm. and when you and that and that goes with anything creative Mm -hmm. you know because if there's anyone listening on the podcast that knows about the creative process if you do not have that vision it will usually take a nosedive. Yes, it will usually fail because that it's the same with, you know, and I've learned this the hard way, I think, is like with email campaigns, marketing campaigns, um, even just having a vision on a web page, whatever the meaning is, the purpose, and, you know, having a rough draft of a layout of how it's going to look. If you don't have those those bones, you can't put flesh and, you know, clay onto that and sculpt it the way that you want because you can get into that dive too deep into that creative space and you're working on this tiny little corner 
for, you know, three hours. And it's, it's, it's not, you're not adding to the vision. And I think that, you know, when you get too fine and detailed in finding the exact perfect word, that's where you can go wrong. And, you know, for your visions, for your affirmations, you have this vision. And it's just this like either esoterical or this just kind of like overwhelming sense that you have that then you can just flow with the words on the paper from there from that point Mm -hmm. you know and I think that 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 creative process is necessary well and I've never considered myself as a studious smart intelligent you know whatever those words are maybe um, maybe you say book smart here because you're very street smart and you're also very emotionally smart and and business savvy you know heading to heading to I think I was in fifth grade where my reading skills and concentration and was like low man (laughs) on the totem pole and I had to go to these courses one hour a day called Redac never forget it and they taught you how to do that and I was kind of like yeah that's me (laughs) but when I can get into and I've been writing these affirmations and intentions for 12 years right has allowed me to feel, you know, intelligent, right. smart, effective. But I have to speak from a different set of, of structure, not what I was taught that mm-hmm. the school required me to do, right. um, but to kind of flow. And you found your voice. And found my voice. So yeah. it's funny because right before we got on here um, – I got an email. I'm working with somebody in the personal intention bracelet um, field, you know, mm-hmm. which these. and I get uh, and I we were working on intention, uh, the words and what the feeling was because we have to attach to the exact feeling mm-hmm. of what you want to achieve because it's not here yet. You can't identify it there. You can't hold on to it yet. Mm-hmm. So you have to describe this goal, right? Right, and then you got to say in real time what your subconscious needs to believe is true Mm -hmm. even though it's not right so i've i gave her some uh, some um direction and so i said you know something like this and i wrote i wrote this out in a couple sentences for the affirmation and i just got an email that said you know i've been sitting on this you know and i like what you've done I like mm. I like what we're gonna go with with what you've written. So, you know, I, you know I don't care how old you are, anybody. <laughs> uh, but the older I get, the more that I you know I ant. We are our charts, mm-hmm. and we don't have to not like them. We have to just find the way we we adhere to what we've been doing all these years, and then go. Oh yeah, I'm really good at that. Right. I may not be really good at that, but I'm really good at that. Right. Right. So, and that's one of these placements. So let's go on to talisman times because this is where i do feel like i right um, so we have two upcoming and the first one is wednesday march 9th to adhere to a commitment i stay steady on my plan i am an authority figure of this subject which i continue to build from scratch Mm. so this could be for a business a business person it could be uh, com- any commitment that you have maybe a- borrowed on a loan, that you have committed to a relationship, mm-hmm. that you have, you know, like a mortgage or a child or anything right. that you said I do to. Um, you continue to build things from the bottom up. Right. And I, what I yeah. like about this, too, is that it's not assuming that you're building on top of what you've already accomplished, that Sometimes you just need to start back from scratch. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when it comes to relationships or, you know, like business, Mm -hmm. you and then we were actually just um, talking to an old um, business owner friend of ours Mm -hmm. in Evanston. And she was just like, you know, what's it like not having your studio anymore? And um, we were just discussing, you know, it takes it you have to consistently start from scratch you have to consistently <laughs> reinvent mm-hmm. and be that's that's what it takes to be an entrepreneur mm-hmm. you can't keep doing the same old same old mm-hmm. and um 
and that is really true be- because you know I, I like to adhere to a commitment because you have to hit it from so many different angles sometimes mm-hmm. so yeah and to stay steady on the plan again I'm staying here I'm staying here you know yes I have to bring other things in boy I gotta take a right angle right up here but I'm mm-hmm. staying on the track I'm staying on the plan and I am the authority figure of the subject mm-hmm. so whether I had to clear clean slate and build again I have the authority right um, for whatever it is I chose to commit to right so this one is really nice the moon is really and this is what we call the Saturn talisman with the Saturn rising over the horizon in Aquarius um, so this is about staying committed and being serious and something mm-hmm. so if anybody's looking for that stick to right. uh, this is your talisman. Yes. Yeah. And, but this is at 4.53 in the morning. Okay. So, so if you are doing a pre-sale, you, you better join and get your, your butt up at that time. Yes. If so, mine's up, yours is up. So Saturday, March 12th, to nurture children. I create an inspiring and safe environment for my children. We all have so much fun while feeling secure and loved. Mm. Yeah, this is the um, moon in Cancer. So um, let me make sure. (laughs) This is also an early morning. Moon in Cancer in the fifth house. Yeah, making an aspect to Jupiter, the ruler of the chart in the first. So it's really about fun and games, fifth house, children, Mm -hmm. um, about self-expression. Everybody gets to... uh, um, contribute Mm -hmm. um at kind of uh the same level you know it reminds me of you know when a mom or a dad can get down onto the ground Mm -hmm. you know and they don't have to sit in their chair or they can get out onto the ball field and you know uh, yeah play uh, play and and, engage disturb dust right and, and slide and laugh and really really enjoy and what this makes me want to cry right now, but what does a child need to have fun? Is the secure f- family fun that they can have with their parents, mm-hmm. right? That what what hundred percent protection, security, and safe environment mm-hmm. that they can so enjoy the world with their with their parents. Right. So anyway, okay, and, to nurture and, children, you know, and also to take it from tears to maybe even you know buckets is what's breaking my heart in Ukraine is that over 500,000 children are now displaced and and seeking refuge and which is a safe the, environment that's it. right that's that all is and that's for. and that's what their parents are giving them and that is like you know such an amazing gift but it's also so painful to even see those videos of you know the parents saying goodbye to their kid and they're not even sure that they're going to be able to see their child again and oh my break my heart in half is whoo okay so which we do want to talk about you know the Ukrainian crisis in our house because I've been reading a lot of articles because it is it's impactful and um, I think you know we want to talk about it here too so just as a mention, the Talisman of the Month is available and on the site. Remember that this is already discounted and you get that shipping credit. So check it out. It is in the description. So let's move on to the horizon. We have available now is the March Astrology Forecast as well as the cheat sheet that goes along with it. Um, you can download that from the we- the website and also view it. Um, the spring equinox CWS webinar is happening March 9th and this is Sandy and Susan going to be discussing what's going on this spring equinox. It's on the 16th. Oops. 16th. On the 16th. Um, so discussing what is happening with the spring equinox, what can we, you know, practically do when it comes to our own personal charts Right. We're okay. going to go over what it what it means, what it looks like, how we are on the e- you know the equal portion, equal day, equal day, equal tonight. night, mm-hmm. um, as we're moving into um, new growth. Yes, which is the really beginning of um, the zodiacal year. Yay! Yeah. New year. Yeah. Um, okay. 
Also, I'll quick mention here, we don't have the links up yet, but the talisman ceremony is happening April 9th. This is the Jupiter and Neptune. So we'll we'll tell you more about this when you need to know. Um, and just keep that in mind, April 9th. Um, and it's early in the morning. Okay, let's do yeah, it. I'm going to see if I can maybe inch it a little bit more um but you know it's when you make a talisman right it's, it's universal it's the universe's time we yeah. don't get to call that um okay so i'll also throw in uh the personal intention talisman link if anyone is interested because the spring equinox is coming up this is a really wonderful time you know it's kind of that astrology new year so what is it that we can really start fresh and get energized with when it comes to this Aries season. And Jupiter is in Pisces. This is not going to, this lasts till May. Let's go, people. Like, mm -hmm. if we got to, you know, what's the saying? Get while the getting's good or yeah. <laughs> move while the moving's good. We can make, we can just sit here and do all kinds of. We, You and I can. <laughs> We're good at that. So, but um, also. Because, yeah, with Jupiter and Pisces, this won't come around for another 12 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're, we're clipping quickly. Right. And even when we look at the Jupiter coming back into Pisces, October, November, and December, there's going to be a square with, with Mars mm -hmm. uh, making a square to Jupiter from Gemini period and his retrograde. So this is the better mint, best, 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 how, grandiose, mm -hmm. biggest, largest period to get any talisman uh, that you can that's being made with Jupiter and Pisces. And if you want to have a personal, now's the time to sign up. Now's the time to sign up because we've got to work through it. Right. And we only have got a couple to prep. more months. Yes. yes. Okay, so let's move into our house. Um, you know, just as we discussed earlier in the podcast is, you know, right now things are a little bit tough. You know, it's emotional. It's with this Ukrainian crisis kind of not sure where it's at. Is it, you know, getting to constant. a point? Yeah, yeah it's, it's consistently just, yeah. on our minds. We just got we're getting through this covid um scare that we've had for over two years and you know and so i've been noticing that there's a lot of articles there's a lot of information a lot of discussion around you know just how people are kind of feeling like they're running out of emotions like there's mm -hmm. just no more ability to to cry and and to show how much we care because, you know, we're emotionally burned out, mm -hmm. you know, just from being constantly tapped with what's going on in social media and the rest of the world and, you know, nationally and within our own community. So um, there's so many doctors that are coming in and discussing this and it's, you know, it doesn't mean that you're a bad person, that you're, you know, turning cold. It's it's just that. It's just you're emotionally burned out. And with Russia's war on Ukraine, it's the largest conventional military attack in the country on a country since World War II. Can I make a comment there? Yeah. That you weren't planning on me saying. No, I um, definitely want you to comment. Yeah. Um, World War II. Mm-hmm. Uranus was in the sign of Taurus. Oh, check. We're, I mean, we're there. Check check box that. Right. Um, north node was in Taurus. South node was in Scorpio. Check. Check, check. check. Wow. And Mars was in Capricorn. Okay. Mars is in Capricorn again. So we are in the same themology. Is right. that a word? No. Uh, the same... Uh, planetary at least these these three right. uh and uranus doesn't get there but for 80 84 years mm -hmm. uh rotation around the nodes get into this place for about 18 months every 18 years mm. and then mars gets in this place every once every two years so to find a time that all of those blend in we are in what um is the same themology yeah. as World War II. Right, the same astrological And that's why theme. it feels yeah. very, very... Similar. S very similar. Right. And, I mean, 
with all of this going on, it's like even if you if you know of people that are in Ukraine, if you have loved ones there who are trying to get to safety, I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot. And what mainly the the message was in a lot of these articles that I was reading is, you know, kind of give yourself a little bit of grace because there is there are things that we can do you know, on self-care levels and donations and, you know, and prayer. Raising frequencies. Mm -hmm. Um, But also like, you know, and also getting educated, you know. And so when I was reading a lot of these articles, I was learning a whole lot because also, you know, back in World War II, like I, I read about it when I was in school and everything, but there's just also so much that's not communicated mm-hmm. in in oh, yeah, those the feeling senses. senses right yeah. so um you know what i noticed too is like within the language that ukrainians re- like most ukrainians and i actually do have ukrainian friends and they all know russian they're maybe not fluent but they can hold a conversation um and but vice versa, Rus- Russians don't know Ukrainian. And what I found out from them is that, you know, back for 70 years when Russia was, you know, the Soviet Soviet Union, Union and they were c- creating um, the main national language of Ukraine, they were forcing them with schools and public institutions and every public daily life you had to speak Russian and it was like kind of really drilled in but the coolest thing that is also so inspiring to me and I think it's also so important to remember these facts is that the Ukrainian people held on to their language for 70 years I think that that's incredible Mm -hmm. even when they were told Mm -hmm. to forget it to forget it like and after 70 years don't you think you would just kind of all right fine you know like the a couple gener you know generations are kind of continuing continuing to roll out and it's i mean just to hold that in yeah and keep that so sacred again it's a the customs mint and 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 i think that that is also a huge part of why this is um so impactful because with the Ukrainians fighting back and holding and you know everyone it doesn't matter who they are if they're a heavyweight champion boxer or they're the Miss Ukraine um they're they're hold they're taking up arms and some of my friends uh, I went to the Ukrainian march here in Chicago to you know support my friends me and my boyfriend's friends um and i was hearing i was hearing about their their grandparents who are still there saying you know what they're doing they're creating molotov cocktails they're they're doing whatever they have in their power to protect themselves and to protect their country and you see it you see it in the news you see it in just their their um their fight and their um their grit and their loyalty to their to their world because they kept all of their customs they kept their ukrainian heritage and they held on to it so tight and even in this time of feeling like they're about to really really lose it and they're not feeling a whole lot of support from the rest of the world they're still fighting mm-hmm. when they have when they have like nothing no um, no real defense against what the Russian militaries machines, can. Their their TVs, they're throwing out their four barriers. Mm-hmm. It's. I mean, it's it's so. I mean, and and I think that that is such a great point to remember is that we can be really inspired by the strength and creativity that the Ukrainian people are are bringing up you know throwing their washers dryers refrigerators out into um the streets to try and hinder the convoys they're cutting down or removing the street signs so that the russians you know can't necessarily communicate exactly where they are and um 
you know, even another thing that I learned and I, I did this not even understanding what I was really doing. So, um, when I guess in English, I guess it was really, and I've heard you do this too. It's, it was normal to say the Ukraine and I've, I've caught myself doing that. And I was kind of curious, like, why do I say the Ukraine? And when you, when you think about it and when you really like dissect that, it's actually, you know, when we're saying, oh, I live in the Midwest, I don't live in, you know. Yeah. So it, it, what it's doing is really just kind of like devaluing it and not as a country, but more as a region. And so back when the USSR, you know, Ukraine started being its own sovereignty, they officially dropped the the huh. from it the and, t-h-e right because that was also inflicted you know by russia and just to like kind of like deem it more as a region rather than you know its own country country yeah. and so um so now ever since 1991 now the government of ukraine is re- you know requesting that the the be taken out mm-hmm. and um and it's just so interesting because I never knew that, you know, so all of these little tiny things and then all also these huge impactful things that the Ukrainian people are doing, it just it just really shows what's the the micro and the macro and what's what's going on in the world right now. And I, yeah, I feel like I can feel my my blood boiling a little bit I can feel like this you know excitement and also kind of anger and fear and just like kind of bubbling up and I and I'm sure the listeners if you're you know still listening and you haven't (laughs) muted me yet um you feel the same thing when you're talking about this that it's you feel like personally it's a layer in your life right now Mm mm-hmm COVID, like you said, COVID created a space of fear. And then here this got layered as COVID's fear and um, un- unknown and um, unsuredness of where where will land and what mm-hmm. it will do and how, when will it leave. Um, all of this two-year period is now got another layer of what does this mean for me? Right. And we're uh, we're on the other side of the world to of it. Right. So, you know, and <sighs> and and I I feel, you know, guilty of this too because I was learning so many things about these, you know, all these articles that I was reading and trying to stay up to date with what was going on that I also learned that there's a new term called like doom scrolling where you're kind of like very hyper aware of you know what's going on and so like all of the headlines have these very triggering and scary Mm -hmm. words that they use so that you do click onto it and you're Mm -hmm. you're reading it um and there's um one therapist has coined it as headline stress disorder where we're just like consistently like on edge and and you know just trying to get as much information as we can and trying to feel connected to what's going on you know around the world um and man it it is an it's an anxious type of feeling and so um you know and and a lot of places that I read is like you know what can you do when you're overwhelmed and you're feeling the anxiety of what's going on is you know reach out to friends and family and you know do what you can to discuss different things Mm -hmm. Or even if you do discuss with somebody else, you're actually feeling that, you know, connection and support from someone, but also, you know, support Ukraine in whatever way you can, which is like, you know, donating, donating to the Ukrainian Red Cross. There's another one called Save the Children for all of those, you know, children who are being displaced and, you know, sent off to safety. And um, so... But also, you know, take care of yourself, take care of your mental health and know that, you know, doom scrolling and headline stress disorder is, you know, kind of creating 
rearing its ugly head right now and within the last few years. So um, that's my little tea for today. And I know (laughs) this is maybe not what people want to hear, but I felt the need that I wanted to share this and, Mm -hmm. you know, discuss it and bring it up to, you know, maybe some practical terms of, you know, how we can at least view and structure this a little bit. Um, So thanks. Any comments? (laughs) It's a big bite to try and get down and swallow and then having it digest. So I think, you know, it'll be interesting how we handle this when we're already burnt out. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a war. Yeah. And, and so. Uh, you know, I, I did hear from one friend who is from there but does not live there any longer. And, you know, she said, when they say they go to their basements, they don't have basements. They have a hole where they put, you know, like their bunker. Some of their, they have a bunker. Mm-hmm. And which is not a place where you want to hang out for anything. You want to store your potatoes down there. Oh, right. You don't it's want a to cellar. have yeah. to go live in a pipe. Right. Um, in the dark. Right. So this is a really, really dark time for us all right and especially the ukrainian people and i mean to to send a message out there um keep fighting be inspired by what the ukrainian people are doing you know do what you can to support and make sure to also you know support yourself and do what you can for yourself as well so Thank you, everybody, for listening. Of course, we, we'd we love to hear from you. Email me, alex at intentionbeads.com. I would love to share your feedback here on the podcast. And, um, you know, stay safe. Keep praying for Ukraine. And we will talk to you all next week. Have a great week, everybody. Bye now. And so you finally know you control where you go.